Over the last 10 years, the size of the battery pack found in new electric cars has dramatically changed. When I first bought my 2011 Nissan Leaf, it had a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack. My Chevrolet Bolt EV behind me has a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. And believe me, that's starting to look a little small with cars with 70, 80, 90, and even 100 kilowatt hour battery packs quickly becoming the norm in the new car marketplace. And of course, the larger the capacity of your car's battery pack, the further you can travel on a single charge. But one thing that hasn't really changed that much in the last 10 years is the power capability of the granny lead. You know, the portable emergency charging unit that comes with most new electric cars. I say most because some electric cars aren't even sold with them anymore. The portable granny lead charger is really useful if you're visiting friends or relatives who don't have a dedicated at-home charging station. And I've used them several times in the past. In fact, whenever I'm in the UK and I've borrowed an electric car, it's the granny lead that allows me to charge up when I'm at my mum's house because she doesn't have a charging station. She doesn't even have a car, so she's not going to be putting one in. And I'm not going to lie, you know, if you can find an AC charging station somewhere on your route or a DC rapid charger that you can sit at for a couple of minutes, that's always going to be preferable than using the granny lead that came with your car. And let's face it, if you happen to live in North America, granny leads are really, really slow. Charging this car with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack from empty to full on a granny lead, well, that can take days. And if you've just driven a really long way to see family and friends, you probably want to be able to use your car while you're there, not sit there with it plugged into whatever household outlet you happen to find. When we do road trips in this car, we recently went to CES in Las Vegas and also to Fully Charged Live, we had to use our granny lead to top the car off every night. Luckily, most of the time, we were able to replenish as much range as we used each day, but we weren't able to charge the car back up to full for our return trip which is where this comes in, the ChargeGet electric vehicle charging system. It's just launched on a Kickstarter campaign and the team behind the unit were kind enough to send me a pre-production test unit. So I'm gonna have a look at it, I'm gonna put it through its paces and hopefully we can decide whether it's worth your money or not. At the heart of the system is this unit here. It looks like any portable charging unit or granny lead that might come with your car. On one end, you've got the connector for your car. For the US market, you get the J1772. And if you're in Europe, you'll get the Menenkes connector, the Type 2 connector that you're used to finding on most European market cars. Depending on which option you pick on Kickstarter, you can have your own charge get system from as little as $420. That's just for the bare bones unit with one adapter. You'll be able to add future adapters to your unit when the Kickstarter campaign has concluded. And the goal of this project is to provide up to 32 different adapters. That means you can theoretically travel the world with your electric car and always be able to charge up. At this end of what I'm going to call the power brick is a series of pins. Now, you probably don't recognize these pins as being compatible with any plug that you may know around the world, and that's because they're not designed to be. They're designed to interface with these, which are essentially little adapters that simply plug on to the end of the unit, click in place, and allow you to plug in to any power outlet. In this case, this is a North American NEMA 1450 outlet, so I can plug this into the NEMA 1450 in my garage. That means that the charging station, this charging unit, will be able to charge my car at its maximum power rate. My car can charge at about seven kilowatts. ChargeGet have also sent me this adapter, which is good for, I think, 30 amps. If you have a friend who has a dryer outlet and no dedicated EVSE, you can use this plug along with a main unit to charge your car. Now, because of this little plug arrangement on the end of the adapter, as soon as you plug that into the main unit, the unit can tell what you've plugged in, just like the Tesla mobile connector, and it allows you to make sure that you're not pulling too much current for the electrical wiring that you've just plugged into. In addition to this, they've also sent me a 110 volt granny lead. And over the next couple of months, I'm going to be testing out all of these different adapters to see how they perform in the real world. 
In North America, you get a choice between a seven and a half kilowatt unit or an 11 and a half kilowatt unit. And in Europe, you're gonna get a choice of between, I think it's an 11 kilowatt or a 22 kilowatt unit. Now the 22 kilowatt unit is a three phase compatible unit. So you'll be able to charge cars up like the Renault Zoe, cars that have a, a powerful onboard AC charger that can take up to 22 kilowatts. You're gonna be able to charge that from a three phase power outlet in what, an hour or so, which is a phenomenal improvement on the granny lead that came with your vehicle. One of the things I really like about the charge get, although I haven't had a chance to do a whole lot with it yet, is the little display on the front of the unit. Now this display gives you information about how much charge you're putting into the car, how much power you've actually drawn during your charging session, as well as the voltage of the power outlet and also how much current you're drawing. There are two buttons below the screen that allow you to change parameters of the unit, including activate a charge timer, so you can delay the start of charging, as well as lower the total power output of this unit. So you can actually turn down the charging unit, either if you are generating power on the roof of your home and you want to charge at a power rate that is equal to or less than the amount of power you're generating on the roof. Now I've just changed the maximum current of this unit to 10 amps, and you'll notice that the maximum power it's pulling from the wall has now dropped to 2.4 kilowatts. But if I want, I can just hold this button and change the maximum current by going all the way back up again. The other important thing to know about this is that it's got current sensing technology in it, which means if it detects a sudden drop in voltage, it knows there's something wrong with the wiring of the house or the outlet that you're plugged into. And so it will automatically reduce the current that it's sending to the car. This is really important because it means that it helps prevent fires. We've seen all kinds of horror stories over the years of people plugging in high power charging units into home wiring that really isn't up to it. And it's one of the reasons why the electric car industry has said to this point, you're generally better off with a hardwired unit. This does away with that because it has that current sensing technology in it. And the creators of the ChargeGet system say that this allows you to ensure that you feel safe and confident every time you plug in wherever you are. So there you have it. That is the Charge Get system. I will be using it uh, both at home and on the go for the next month or so to test it out. It will be on Kickstarter for the next month or so from around 420 US dollars for the entry level version, which comes with one adapter. You can add additional adapters if you so wish, and you can also add extras like the bag and a few other things as well. But when you consider that the Tesla mobile charging system, the Tesla mobile connector costs about $1,000 for the entry level point, you can get them converted to J1772, but they tend to be a little bit more expensive than this unit. As I say, this is not an endorsement of this product. I've got it on review, I've got it on loan. So far, so good, I've had no problems. If there are issues, I will, of course, let you know. That's one of the reasons why the guys sent me this. And I'm not being paid to promote this, and this is not an advertorial. This is just a unit that we're testing that happens to coincide with a Kickstarter launch. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks very much to our patrons who are scrolling by on my right. If you'd like to join them, please go to patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. I'll be back soon with more great content for you all to enjoy. If you haven't watched this video on my right, please check it out. Google thinks you will enjoy that one. Until next time, be nice to each other, wash your hands and keep evolving.